Oh, good evening, folks. Welcome to Land Timber Stream. I'm finally back. Been out a few days due to various things going on, but uh, it's good to be back to uh, talk to the community here. I hope everyone's having a good night. It is Wednesday night. It's hump day, and there've been a few changes for me. I want to kind of kind of go over. Uh, it is going to be a brief stream for me tonight, just because um, I actually have a change. Going in here a little bit later, uh, working with the uh, the current team I'm working with, so uh, I have to keep it brief. And plus, a lot of what I'm doing right now is reading. So, yeah, we are on day three thirty five. Evolving technologies, network programmability. Twenty eight days to go. That is correct, folks. So, um, this is the kind of schedule I'm working with right now. Within those twenty eight days, so I'm in the middle of reviewing. This new Evolving Technologies Guide, the official Cisco Press uh, Evolving Technologies Guide book. And I'll go over that in a little bit. And then on the 10th, I plan to reevaluate where I'm at and generate a hit list of material to review. And then I'll be reviewing that until the date of the exam. So, yeah, last night I uh, actually got caught up in some work yesterday that took me till. Uh, I mean, close to 9 p.m. Uh, I was actually doing some PowerShell, folks, believe it or not. Uh, some PowerShell uh, scripting. And I just couldn't help myself. Like, I just got in the middle of, I mean, I got sort of in the zone. And I was working on this, this uh, script, and I just kept wanting to work on it and get it done. And I actually needed it for the change tonight. So that was good. But, man, I really enjoyed doing that. Again, as I've always mentioned here a number of times, that you know, once I obtain this uh, CCIE routing and switching certification, my next phase, the next thing I want to pursue more of is programmability, network programmability. So uh, I really enjoyed it, and I don't know why I haven't not liked programming before. Like I know when I was younger, and I was doing more operational support, and had you know was taking some programming courses uh, for college and things like that i always thought you know i really don't like this but i like it now <laughs> maybe that's because it's infrastructure as code and i'm working with you know not just creating like a user interface or something to do with databases but i'm actually working with infrastructure as code now so Maybe that's why I like it now. I don't, I'm not sure, but man, I'm really enjoying working on that. Uh, and I look forward to working on that some more. I did get an exam change. I mentioned it before. I had an exam scheduled for December 31st. Yes, New Year's Eve. And I was actually looking forward to that. I kept saying, you know, I'm drinking New Year's Eve either out of sorrow or complete bliss. But uh, it turns out that uh, and I assumed this would happen. I was kind of surprised I was even able to schedule an exam for New Year's Eve, but I was. And what happened there was uh, I was thinking, you know, this is not going to last. Like, they're going to realize that they left the calendar open for New Year's Eve and no one's going to be working New Year's Eve. So they're probably going to cancel on me. And that's exactly what they did uh, a few days ago. They said, sorry, this, this facility and you know, the standard email from Pearson View. Um, sorry, the facility is not going to be able to host your exam. So this is, I think, maybe the, this is the second time this has happened um, for this particular attempt, third attempt. And so that happened. Um, and then I rescheduled once already. So this is the fourth reschedule. Um, initially, it was going to be in November. And now it's been moved out to January 2nd, which I'm fine with, actually. Um, that's going to work out a little better, too, getting me a few more days. And I'm going to end up having quite a few days off in December this month, uh, vacation days. So that's going to give me a lot of extra, even though some will be travel, uh, you know, family, holiday related. But it's going to give me a good bit of time to study, which is going to be great. So... Anyway, that's where we're at. Written progress. Uh, I'm going to go over the CDP issue in a minute. Um, so this Evolving Technologies book, which I have been reading on Safari Books Online, of course, has three sections. IoT, I finished. It took me less than a day. 
Cloud computing took a little longer, but I finished that, and now I'm on network programmability. Again, the last two nights have not really been able to do much reading, but I'm well into network programmability, and I hope to finish that uh, by the weekend. Uh, so this book, you know, I, I want to hold my review on it and its usefulness until I finished. Uh, about halfway through the cloud computing chapter, I was like, this is not really doing anything for me. Then it got pretty good towards the end. Uh, they started discussing a number of Cisco's cloud products, which I've heard their names many times, don't know, didn't really know what they do. Now I have a better grasp of that. And then the network programmability is offering a lot more promise because it looks like there are, you know, I'm in the sort of beginning of the chapter and it's already getting into like screenshots <laughs> which is good and then it's already told me hey don't worry in a minute we're going to be talking about devnet labs so it looks like i'm going to be able to lab some of the things that are mentioned in the network programmability chapter and that's what i'm hoping for because honestly with iot there really wasn't um i don't know uh, again i'm going to do a full review of this book when i'm when i'm done and I'll go a little bit more in depth at that time. But yeah, if we do get into some DevNet Labs, maybe I'll be able to do one tomorrow on stream. And we can kind of review that, uh, whatever network programmability section I'm on. Uh, quiz time. This is something that has come up. It's been awesome because there have been a couple of things that have come up between Dude for Him and myself. We interact every day. Uh, we ask each other questions. We have banter. His... He has 12 days to go, I believe, before his attempt. So, you know, we decided a while back that we were going to be testing around the same time. Could we, you know, study together and help each other out? So we've been doing that. And we had this issue that came up related to CDP that was just mind boggling. All right, so there was a statement. And I'm just gonna go over this a little bit uh, and, you know, see, see what you think about this, all right? Um, and I won't go over the, like the original question, but it, it came out of this statement. This is from a Cisco doc, this is Cisco documentation. And it says, uh, on the router, the subinterface with the lowest VLAN dot one Q encapsulation is selected as the preferred subinterface to carry the CDP packets. On the switch, the CDP traffic is always preferred on the lowest VLAN configured. That is VLAN 1 always, which cannot be deleted from the VLAN database, so it's always VLAN 1. The CDP protocol behaves differently when the switch sends CDP as a tag packet or untag packet, dependent upon the native VLAN configured on the trunk link. There's a lot of information to unpack there, but I literally, after we had the initial discussion, I had to lab it, and I took a little bit of time with it. And essentially what it came down to is... Let's see, and, and we'll sort of do this as a little bit of a quiz, but in, in reality, um, first, first I'm going to sort of present a scenario and then see what you think, all right? So let's say you have a Cisco switch, and you have a link. We'll illustrate it very simply here. And you have a Cisco iOS router. And what we're trying to do here is simulate essentially a trunk, right? We're not talking about an ax we're not talking about access ports. We're talking about trunk ports. Um, and how will CDP behave on a trunk port? Now, just keep this in mind. For example, we do have a trunk mode on a switch, right? So let's say this is GI zero zero over here, and GI zero zero over here. So I want to pass multiple VLANs of data traffic, right? Um, that traffic would include CDP, okay? Um, but let's say on this side, I'm just going to configure switch port mode trunk. And let's say we have multiple VLANs running on the switch over here, right? So over here on the router, we don't necessarily, I mean, Let's just say like on an ISR, yes, there are switch modules you can buy, but we're not talking about that scenario. 
we're talking about where you have an interface and then sub interfaces, right? So what would you do? What you would do over here is you cannot, you would not say on Jazz Zero Zero switchboard mode trunk. As a matter of fact, you would not really configure anything on Jazz Zero Zero. It'd be unnumbered. And what you would do is you would say uh, like uh, incap dot one q and then VLAN eleven. Uh, GI zero zero dot twenty right, and cap dot one q, and then twenty. There's a couple things when we look at this behavior, this sort of trunking behavior on the Cisco iOS router, uh, that we'll talk about in a minute. But first of all, the CDP frame. So when Cis when the Cisco switch sends a CDP frame, I say a frame. You could say packets. I'm sure it's fine, uh, in the true sense of the word. But so when CDP is sent this way, uh, the interface is going to be GI00. No matter how many VLANs we have over here, um, it's going to be sent out of GI00. And that's going to be, you know, there's certain information you get in CDP, right? As opposed to, for example, LLDP or LLDP MED, uh, hyphen MED, right? So we know that um, I actually have this in my drill sheet, and I know we can say that I'm going to try to I'm going to try to enumerate this before I look. Uh, but in a in a Cisco proprietary CDP packet, um, you're going to have the interface, right? You're going to have a capability, I think. Uh, well, let's break it down in actual like functionality. So you're going to have uh, management addresses. Um, you're going to have the um, BTP domain. Uh, you will have, um, let's see, the native VLAN. And then you will have the port uh, duplex mode. Um, let's see. I know there's other information in there, but those are principally the, the four primary things that you get. Um, so we know that when Cisco switch here sends, that's the information that it's going to have, right? Um, let's pull up the drill sheet here so we can compare this to, for example, um, to LDP hyphen MED, right? or LLDP med. Uh, what did I say? The Yeah, the port duplex mode. So you get port duplex. You also get the MTU. I did not have that here. But both of them do that. Both, you know, because you might see, like I think this is Boson. Uh, I had a question like this. Um, like what is it that you would see when you compare CDP to LLDP med? Uh, what are the differences, right? Um, okay, yeah, so CDP surprisingly shows MTU size. It does not show the port speed. And I always thought that was interesting, you know. So MTU, uh, VTP domain or management, uh, port duplex, the native VLAN, yeah. It's not listed here, management addresses, but you do see those. Um, all right, so just knowing that what a CDP traffic looks like kind of helped me when I initially got this question. I knew that native VLAN was there. Notice, though, that when the switch sends this, this information, there's really no information about, like, VLANs, okay? So, for example, which VLANs are allowed? Um, which VLANs are active in the in that you know trunk port? Um, it actually, I don't even think it really defines whether this is a trunk port or not, right? Um, as a matter of fact, I have some PCAPs, and I did some peak when I first got this. I had to lab it up. I'm like, all right, let's see what the heck is going on here. So surely I have some CDP here. Oh, maybe I don't. Okay. Did I not save these? 
Wow, I thought for sure I'd say, all right, let's just find one out here. There's plenty of places to look, or we could fire up a lab. But we'll do CDP PCAP. Yeah, Wireshark has a wiki out here. All right, so here's some uh, example of traffic. Let's see if they have... Yeah, there are different protocol types, right? Depending on um, which sort of medium. Notice that, you know, pretty much CDP is prolific. So it's not just Ethernet, right? A SNAP network. Uh, HDLC interface, you will see CDP. You also see it on uh, PPP networks. Uh, but I want a sample capture, yeah. CDP V2 frame from a Cisco switch. Here we go. We got one from a switch and one from a router. So we will look at the switch first. Yeah, it's kind of a proprietary. Um, so there's a lot of information here, right? Um, we do have the BTP management domain name. We have the native VLAN. Uh, we have the port ID, of course, and the platform, some Cisco proprietary information. Uh, soft, well, this is all Cisco proprietary. Uh, the device ID addresses. This has one, right? And then management addresses. So there's no information here, though, about how many VLANs are over here or how many, you know, um, SVIs might be associated with those VLANs, okay? So here comes a question. What is the CDP going to look like from the router to the switch? And obviously there is some sort of catch here, which I will get to. Um, which I read to you earlier, right? But so let's say uh, router CDP goes this way. And essentially, even though we have not defined a trunk port, this is kind of a trunk port on a stick in, in a way, right? Because we have sub interfaces and we're telling the router to, when it sends frames out of those interfaces, to encapsulate them using dot one Q encapsulation. Uh, add a VLAN tag and use these VLAN numbers, right? So we're, we're telling the router this is a trunk port uh, for all practical purposes. Um, so the question is, what is the def uh, native VLAN number here? I think it's pretty safe to say that the native VLAN is one, right? Now, what's interesting here is even though I don't have technically a VLAN 1, if I don't define anything here um, and traffic comes in, let's say the native VLAN over here is VLAN 1 and it's tagged, um, this will still be processed by the router. It, it won't necessarily like drop the traffic, right? Um, it's gonna, even though there is no VLAN one theoretically defined here, um, it will allow tag traffic on VLAN one in. And if those are uh, CDP packets, everything is gonna work fine. You do a show CDP neighbor on the router and it's gonna see you know, the neighbor and it properly interpret all the information, okay? The same is when it sends a CDP packet out. And we should see that here when we, we haven't got to the problem yet, but uh, there is a potential problem where you can cause issues with CDP here. But otherwise everything should theoretically work as normal, right? So this is from a, a router. We notice we don't have quite as much information in here, but we do have addresses. This has one listed here, port ID is ethernet zero. 
sent through interface Ethernet zero. Uh, we have capabilities. Um, and then we have a software version, etc. Then we have platform. Notice we do not have the native VLAN here. All right. And that's okay. Um, VLAN one is still going to operate. It's still going to sort of operate with VLAN one being the native, because again, think about it on a Cisco switch. You cannot delete VLAN one. You have to have VLAN one. You can create an SVI on VLAN one and you can shut down that SVI. Um, you can define on a trunk to not allow VLAN one on the trunk you're still gonna have a VLAN one and it's still going to be used for things, right? The same is true really on a router, quote unquote, trunk on a stick. Um, what you can do, however, is, um, by the way, it's, so it doesn't send that, it doesn't send port duplex mode, it doesn't really send uh, MTU, it doesn't send VTP information, it does send a management address. So you're getting a, a more limited CDP frame but you're going to be able to see on the switch who this is, what interface is there, what management address is there, right? Um, now, what we could do here on the router, let's say we wanted to sabotage CDP, right? Or let's say we did this by accident um, or just didn't realize what we're doing. So let's say we have Jazz00 and then Mark Milo, hey, how's it going? Uh, good to see you tonight, man. Believe CDP1 versus CDP2 includes different TLVs and their PCAPs. I hope I'm remembering this correctly. Yes. So I cannot enumerate all the differences between CDP V1 and CDP V2, but I believe it is just that, that there are just fewer options. Um, if you find a link on that, though, definitely share, share that with us. This, these are running CDP V2. Um, I'm pretty sure, or maybe the, maybe they did just ca uh, capture in this particular case, uh, V1. Let's, let's look at this again. So it has like the device ID. Oh, this is version one. Maybe that's why. Um, you know what? I want to go ahead and fire up that lab because... I want to be able to state this correctly. Yeah, let's fire. I'll show you the lab I did. And so you, I think you're right there, Mark Milo. This, we looked at it. It is version one, and that's why there, there's uh, less information. But there, even so, even if it's running version two, you're still not going to see all the information you would see on a switch. Okay, so let's, uh, thank you for that link, by the way. Feature information. Of course, it's not going to actually like tell you. Maybe type link value fields. Oh, here we go. Type link value fields for now. This is fine, but is it showing me what's different for version one? Yes, yeah, so like some of these are in version one though, right? Capabilities. What I'm curious about is what actually do you get in version two that you did not get in version one? Yeah, and, and as it says here, the information you get is based on the type of device in the installed version of the operating system. Uh, CDP version two provides more intelligent device tracking features than those available version one. Okay, that's great. Errors report include mismatch. Okay, so there are more error messages. That's great. Okay, all right, we got some. Uh, don't worry, Marmel. If it. Aha, we got a post here. 
Thank you, sir. Uh, local interface, hold that capability, platform port ID. So is this just what's in version, oh, this says CDPv2. You'll see PCAPs for both, okay? Here's version one. And it looks like the same device. So this is for a switch. All right, so it looks like V2B management domain, native VLAN, duplex, trust bitmap, untrusted port COS, management addresses, power available. You see version two offers improvements via negotiation. Okay, uh, so again, it varies by device. So I'd really like to see like what is the um, CDP version one. Ah. Cisco switches. Uh, and this is from Hewlett Packard, okay. This is, uh, that's an internet troll, I think. Ah, uh, duplex information is not exchanged in CDPv1. Right, you don't get the error. They did, it did mention that. Okay, here's CDPV1, that's... That's what we just looked at. I have this information buried in my notes somewhere. Recall it being a pain to find during my studies too, <laughs> okay. Well, if you happen to find uh, that, that uh, treasure trove, I mean, the, I, I will say like the blueprint, so let's look at the blueprint. I don't think this is part of the blueprint. Like version one, I think, I know we have to be concerned with version two for sure. Um, yeah, it just says CDP and LDP. A lot of what I've seen is like, what are the differences between those two? Um, but let's fire up this lab because I want to see what the router sends. I cannot believe I did not keep those packet captures. I think it was because I was so frustrated. <laughs> so uh, going back to this though, and we'll we'll dig into this a, uh, a minute. But so there there are obviously capabilities right of the router. And if it's running version two, like there's a, the ability to carry a lot of this information as well. But speaking of the native VLAN, so let's say, as I was talking before, that uh, I just wanted to sabotage CDP. All right. So what would happen if I created a GI00.1? Okay. I wouldn't even have to do this, but. Let's say we did it anyway, just to make it perfectly clear to the inter to the router that this is VLAN one on this trunk, right? And we leave the other interfaces are the same. Uh, what is this, this thing doing? Why is it doing that? So let's say we're just going to add these interfaces. So we added this, right? Okay, it should work as it did before, really, because this uh, VLAN 1, you cannot delete it. It's still implied that you have it. 
and it will be processed by the router. Um, however, what if I did this? And I shut down VLAN 1 over here, what would happen? And that is what that little uh, note, I think, is trying to explain. Um, and I'll show you what happens. Uh, CDP, yeah, this is the lab right here. It's very simple. We've got a switch and we got a router. And in a moment, ladies and germs, I will show you what sort of havoc ensues here. Okay, so one thing that got me a little frustrated and why I was so frustrated is because of the poor wording of the document, or first of all, this was not the only uh, excerpt that was, in my opinion, very poorly written. But what it says here on the router, the subinterface with the lowest VLAN.1Q encapsulation is selected as a preferred subinterface to carry the CDP packets. Well, not exactly. Uh, first of all, what does it mean by carry? Is that talking about uh, transmit or receive? Because you must receive, you know, if you when you receive traffic, it is received on an interface, right? So when we're talking about a trunk port, there is some determination and that has to be made, whether it's reading the, the tags or if there is no tag, like what interface should this be associated with? So the statement here that it selects the lowest VLAN.1Q encapsulation, the subinterface with the lowest VLAN.1Q encapsulation is selected as a preferred interface to carry the packets is just not true. So in this scenario above, notice the lowest subinterface with encapsulation dot one Q is eleven. It is still going to carry that uh, CDV packet that is ingress that is inbound. It is still going to process it as uh, VLAN one. Um, and I'll show you that. So let's look at the configuration here. This is just switch, uh, show run interface jazz zero zero. Uh, I think it's uh, jazz zero one actually. Uh, did it not save it? I may not have saved it, let's see. Oh yeah, we did, okay. So let's uh, make some changes here. We're gonna take, we're just gonna say encapsulation dot one Q 10, not native, excuse me. And over here, okay, this is just default, right? So by default, um, Show run all base jazz zero one. Begin. Oh, buffers. So as we can see here, uh, we have switch port. This is a default behavior, right? Negotiation auto. Um, we have access VLAN one, so you can still process. Um, we are going to put it in the trunk mode though, and that's it. Switch port mode trunk. All right, uh, switch port trunk. 
and cap dot one Q switch port mode trunk. And we'll even create these inner these VLANs over here. VLAN, what are they? Uh, I think it was 10. Yeah, 10 and 21, right? 10, uh, I should have just done a comma. A show VLAN brief. There are the VLANs. If we do show interface trunk. So we have all VLANs are allowed and we have VLANs 1, 10, and 21 are active. Um, so there we, there we go. Native VLAN 1, right? Uh, CDP is going to be enabled, and this should be version 2 by default. Let's just see. Interface Jazz 00. CDP enable. Uh, is it here? You do CDP advertise V2. Okay. Oh, we do CDP run here, right? Yeah, we're just gonna run it on the router version two on all interfaces. Okay, so now let's do a packet capture. And as I'm, as I'm we're gonna capture packets that are, uh, it doesn't really matter which side. And all should be good in the world. I uh, don't really expect any issues here, right? Uh, we will get to see what CDP version 2 looks like from the router. And as I mentioned, it should just be, uh, I would expect very similar to what you get on a switch, maybe a little less information. Oh, what we also want to do is uh, increase the interval. CDP timer, yeah, we'll say 10 every 10 seconds. Same over here. Well, we don't need it necessarily on the switch, but they don't have to match, of course. Jazzer one, is that the correct? Yeah. Oh, is the interface shut down? Probably. Unlike OSPF, where almost everything needs to match, yeah. CDP don't really care too much. So we're already seeing here, uh, let's clear because we started out. Not completely configured, show CDP neighbor. So over here on the switch, we have learned our CDP neighbor. And I don't know why I'm not getting packet captures here. Why is that? Let's try this again. Did I do the wrong port? Okay, getting stuff now. So within a few seconds, we should see our CDP advertisement, and there we go. All right, so this is, um, notice we've got a VLAN tag here. And we've got CDP. Yeah, so notice here we don't have, first of all, which, which interface did the router choose to send, see it says router, this is coming from the router. Which interface did it choose to carry the CDP traffic outbound? All right, it did not use the lowest configured sub-interface. All right, so we see first of all that documentation is wrong in that respect, in my view, or just very unclear. Oops, didn't mean to stop it. All right, there is no VLAN uh, one sub interface. Okay, 
So, but we see that the router has chosen to send it the, as the source interface as VLAN one, because we have a 802.1Q VLAN tag here, tag VLAN number one. All right. It also, it does not, it shows a lot of information here though, before, than what we saw on the other PCAP, but um, it does not have the native VLAN listed here. And that's fine. We can pretty much assume that's going to be VLAN one anyway. On the switch, however, no matter what, it's got native VLAN, it's got B2P management domain, uh, et cetera. We don't have, so for the most part, we have a lot of the same information except some things related to like VLAN stuff, right? Version platform addresses, capabilities, IP prefixes. Now this, what would this be used for? Do you know? A little trivia question here. You don't see that over here, but we're not doing IP routing over here on the, on the switch, but on the router we are. This would be ODR, right? There it is. It says it used for ODR. So you could route with CDP in version two uh, with the routers. All right, so now let's get back to the scenario we talked about earlier. And this gets to what the question dude for him and I were, were discussing. Let's say we create a sub interface, GI01. Actually, let's go back to the statement before I move on. Let's go back to the statement here. And it says on the router, the subinterface with the lowest VLAN dot one Q encapsulate is selected as a preferred subinterface to carry the CDP packets. Now this should be true of CDP that is inbound. So if we look over here at the router, show CDP neighbor, Check it out. It did. It does say that the local interface is the lowest configured subinterface with uh, 802.1Q encapsulation. So this statement is halfway true. Halfway true. All right. Something else that is wrong here. Let's say. Um, that we configure, we want to sabotage things, right? We're hackers or whatever. So I'm going to create a sub interface here that would be the native VLAN by default. It would be the native VLAN. By the way, uh, before we do this, notice here that it still thinks, even though the The, the packet was carried by VLAN 10, subinterface 10. We're still not confused about what the v native VLAN is on the switch. All right. But let's do this interface GI011. And we're going to say uh, ncap.1q1. Actually, let's do native, right? And then we're going to do shutdown. Okay. Now watch what happens here. This would actually, let's say we're doing ODR routing, which please tell me you're not. Um, but let's look at the latest CDP packets now coming from router one. Every 15 seconds, right? All right, now let's look at, first of all, let's clear CDP. Let's say the router just booted up. Do that over here as well. All right, this is, now look what's happening. Coming from router, now we're not using VLAN 1 anymore to carry the packet. Uh, we are using the next available VLAN uh, interface or sub-interface that we have sent through interface GI01.10. So in this case, that, that snippet 
that text is true. Um, and it is going to use 10, but, you know, how often would you have this situation, right? Where GI0 one is configured, it's configured with dot one Q encapsulation and it is shut down. Uh, probably not very often. Okay, here's the other thing that happens. I have zero CDP entries displayed. So essentially we have shut down VLAN one, which you're not supposed to do. And we're getting traffic from the neighbor CDP. And we're just like, I don't know what to do with this. So the router is not even processing the CDP information. It refuses to populate the CDP table because this is coming in on VLAN uh, 11 or 10, I think is what's over here. This is not a native VLAN and it's just not gonna process it. Now, what if we make this the native VLAN? 01.10, uh, ncap.1q10 native. Uh, we'll speed up things on route on the switch. A CDB timer 15. And here we go. We got the, so the information's coming in as always from the switch. What did the router do with it? Show CDP neighbor. Now it's fine because um, it knows it has a different native VLAN than VLAN one and that interface is up. So it is, it is going to say, okay, I can process this now, right? So essentially if you receive uh, a CDP frame and the a sub interface with the default or native vlan id is shut down even though the router is processing the cdp packet like the cdp packet is arriving at the router it's still just basically going to drop it in fact if you do a um, debug you'll see the cdp information arriving so anyway, that was it. Um, is this ripe like territory for a CCIE question? Absolutely. Um, absolutely it is. So it's very good to know sort of how the router acts with CDP and the native VLAN um, and VLAN 1. So that's why I wanted to, to cover that today. But that, that's our quiz time. I know that took a long time but uh, it was good for me to review it as well. So anyway, going back to our agenda, folks, we'll wrap things up here. Um, had a good meat chunk today. This is uh, from Twitter, but it's uh, Jeremy Siowara. Uh, good little BGP load balancing blog. I've not read all of it, but there are diagrams and there's some, some explanation about uh, load balancing traffic between three routers. Uh, I think there's a lab you can do, so. Um, I don't know if it's free, but he definitely has a lesson out there. And I just thought I would share that. So anyway, folks, I got to get ready for my change tonight. And I need to do some study before then. Great uh, chat with uh, Mark Milo. Good to see you. And uh, sending good bits out to the universe. And we shall plan, if all goes well, we'll be back here tomorrow night here on the Land Tamer stream. And we'll see you then. Have a good night.